We're at the X-ray Microimaging Lab at Queen Mary University, London. Dr. David Mills is going to help us to video the core practical experiment, Inverse Square Law for Gamma Radiation. This is the Geiger Muller tube we're using as the detector in our experiment. As you can see, there's a protective screen over the front which protects the thin mica window. It's connected to this counter which gives us a reading in counts per second. So we're going to look at the radioactive source we're using for today's experiment. When using any radioactive source for experiments, things to remember are distance, keep as far away from it as possible, time, handle it or be exposed to it for as short a time as possible, and shielding, have as much material between you and the source as possible. So in the source we're using today, we are shielded with some extra 3mm lead enclosing the box. Removing the lead, we can see we have the box with the warnings. And this is an americium source which is shielded. Americium usually emits alpha particles. We're shielding the alpha particles off and only seeing the gamma rays coming out of this. If I remove the source from the box, I can show briefly where the radioactivity is emitted from. The whole of the metal is shielding and there's just a small aperture that the gammas are actually emitted from. I'll now put it back in the box for safety. And once back in the box and shielded, it's safe enough to leave on the table. Thanks Dave. Now we're going to run the experiment. You will need to pause and rewind the video several times to get a full set of readings. Watch it all the way through once to get a feel for it. The source is here. The Geiger Muller tube detector is here. We've given you a close up of the GM detector here so you can take an accurate distance reading. And the counter is here with a close up here. OK. Let's start and get on with the experiment. Firstly, you need to estimate the background radiation in the lab when the source has been put away in its box. And now the main experiment.